Hey, what's up guys? My name is Asian Psycho, and we're gonna be starting up, um, actually, I had, uh, already recorded the second episode for my run-through for Daitekoku. You can see me here, I'm live commentating this by the way, but, you can see here, I'm going up through the, uh, start menu again, and for some reason, it didn't, um, record the second episode, or some something went wrong with the video file, so I, I was like really pissed off about that. Anyways, hopefully it won't do this again, and um, I tried rec recording for like 10 seconds or so, it seemed fine, I don't I don't really understand what's so, what was wrong with it, but anyways, hopefully um, I'll be able to re-explain everything that I had uh, uh, done in the first episode, or as much as I could anyway. So I don't know how much of the uh, first episode uh, covered, um, if I do re-repeat things that I've already said in the first episode, then I'm sorry, but I don't really know uh, where I am in like explaining the game mechanics of Daitekoku. But um, just just so that I make sure I don't really I don't miss over anything at all, um, I'm going to kind of go into the detail, the important stuff about this game first. So once again, um, this map this is supposed to be a map of um, the world, the Earth as it was in uh, World War II. Um, you can't read these unless you're Japanese, but um, the names of all these planets, um, they call them planets anyway, um, are akin to uh, their real life counterparts. Um, some places like Berlin are just called Berlin um, because they're so famous. This is Berlin right here. This is London. Um, somewhere here is Moscow. I think that's Moscow. Um, but other places, such as this place, this place is supposed to represent the Philippines, where I'm, where I'm kind of circling with my mouse right now. Um, instead, this game calls it Manila 2000. And for those of you geography nerds, uh, you would know that Manila is the capital of the Philippines. So this kind of indicates that this is where uh, the Philippines would be, um, or its counterpart to our real life world. So there we go. Um, this game kind of parodies their names a little bit too. Unless it's really important, like this is Japan, obviously, um, this is Berlin, and all the major locations around the world, so they don't mess with those. So that's about the map itself. Uh, moving on to the actual individual character, uh, country characteristics. Um, for example, Japan, you see the planet that I'm circling right now. Um, you can see it's got the Japanese flag on it, and next to it is an emblem, and it looks like a gold wrench. That means it has the, um, it has the building called Great Repair and please note that every time you conquer an enemy territory, an enemy planet, what have you, you have the option to build a certain structure on that planet and it will do any kinds of things for you um, or it will do like a certain thing for you depending on the structure that you build. For example, I'll naming a few off the top of my head, I'll click on this just so you can see what the... Uh, like this one. Um, if you scroll your mouse over this little icon here, it'll say Repair Plus, and you can see the um, the effects that it'll have. Basically, it repairs 80% 80 of your uh, commander's fleet's HP if they're damaged. So, that's that. And if it's different, then it'll give you a different description, obviously. Um, some structures that I can name off the top of my head right now are, um, for example, one of them is called Query, where it'll double your uh, resource revenue per turn. Um, well, what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I accidentally increased my own um, game volume for it, so I kind of freaked out. And um, you can see the resource revenue that you can acquire per uh, country right here. And another one is, I think it's called Refinery. It's called Refinery or Power Plant or something. And it basically doubles your resource. Um, not your resource, sorry, but your technology, your development points. And your development points, your uh, technology is um, down here where it says 540. So it can double that, or it can do some other things that, uh, there are lots of structures that I haven't used before, uh, because I don't know what they do, but I'm probably going to try to see what they do, uh, for all of them, probably. I don't know when that'll be, but whatever. So that's that, and, um, do note that this great repair, um, structure is only available in, uh, in Japan. Um, that's, that's just how it rolls so you can't really build this great structure a great repair structure anywhere else you can build um, a kind of a secondary repair shop called uh, just repair shop um, this is called a great repair and it'll repair I think 40% of your fleets um, HP if they're damaged so it's not as good as uh, Japan's great repair obviously but it's still very good because otherwise uh, your shit your commanders will only uh, recover 10 HP per turn and that's gonna take a long time if you need them to uh, fight multiple battles so the repair Pair shops help out a lot. Let's see, so now we're about to invade Beijing. 
But um, before we do, let's check out our commanders because I don't think we've, uh, unless I've completely forgotten, I don't think we've reviewed what our commanders do and what they can, uh, what they have as ships. So let's go click on uh, Togo Shiyoshi's um, little character portrait here. So as you can see, it'll give you your character portrait. If you scroll over, it'll give you your, uh, it'll give the character um, uh, character description, and it'll give him what they like and what they hate. He incidentally hates sardines. I don't know why. And to the right of his name tag, you'll see all the important battle stats of his fleet. Um, you'll see his HP here, he has 691. You'll see his radar, which is the speed equivalent in Sengoku Rant. Basically, radar is uh, the higher the number for your radar speed, um, the faster you'll move in battle. So basically, if you think about it, if you have more radar, that means your uh, area of uh, visual, your visual area will be larger than your enemy. So if you can see your enemies fast, uh, or yeah, if you can see your enemies faster than your enemy can see you, then obviously you have a you have an upper hand against them, and you can pull off a first shot um, more accurately. So basically, radar is your speed. The higher it is, the better. So make sure you keep that in mind. Now moving on to the four uh, weapon systems of this game, um, they go in left from left to right in um, kind of fastest to slowest. So um, let's see, let's get right into them. So the very leftmost weapon system th uh, that I don't have, uh, at least right now for now that is, is called carriers, or I like to call them carriers. They're officially named fighters, but in essence, they're ships. The ships that uh, you that you can um, have them, like the ships that actually fire the fighters, are called care, or they look like aircraft carriers from World War II. So I like to call them carriers. So the carriers are the fastest weapon system in this game basically if you no matter how low your radar speed is so let's say you have like 100 radar and your enemy has like 100 like 1000 radar um if you have aircraft carriers and they don't that means you get to move first no matter what no matter how fast they are that means you can move you can always move faster than them because of your weapon systems um your carriers because you have carriers whereas they do not you can attack them first before they attack you that's just how it goes it's based on weapon system as well though radar comes into play uh if both of you have aircraft carriers so let's say if you have 100 uh, radar and the other team has like 101 that means that the enemy will be able to attack you first even though it's like one radar diff point radar difference so radar and uh, weapon systems are key uh, to note in this game Next up is the uh, laser systems. Lasers will be your most common weapon in this game other than um, other than steel bullets, which we'll, which we'll get to in a second. Um, lasers are the most common, like I said, but they are also um, kind of the most counter because of their frequency. Um, though it's not like it happens every time because uh, there are going to be a lot of battles where lasers are in effect, or effectively like you can't use them like there will be like some sort of environmental condition or um, some battlefield condition that you will not be able to use your lasers at all so you have to rely on other weapon systems but for the most part laser will be your go-to weapon for most of your commanders moving on to the next one as you can you probably can't see it because it's I don't have any um, ships that fire this kind of weapon but next one after or the next fastest after lasers are missiles and uh, if you can see right here, for example, this little green frog ship right here, it had it has uh, missile ships, or it has a weapon missile weapon system, and that's what it looks like. And missiles, they're not too useful. I mean, I do have their, my uses for them, and there are quite a few commanders that do have very very good missile bonuses, and we'll get into bonuses in a second. But um, for me, I don't really use them much. The main the main kind of advantage that missile ships have are is that they're capital missile ships um i'll get into like what i mean by capital ships and whatnot later but the the missile capital the capital missile ships god getting my speech all wrong but the capital missile ships are very very high in hp so if you have a commander who's has very good um hp bonuses then i recommend putting on a few uh capital missile ships on them because they have a lot of hp and um, those hp bonuses will stack very very well after that is finally last but not least the steel bullets or i like to call them cannons so basically you can see there's a cannon ship right here this is the lowest tier cannon ships that you'll ever see in this game because honestly they quite honestly they suck um once you develop better cannon ships they are much better in terms of uh, <laughs> pretty much everything so 
the cannon ships or the basically the cannon weapon systems are the slowest because they've got the least range apparently in this game but they are extremely powerful i think the strongest um steel bullet ship that i've ever gotten was uh they had 540 steel bullets per ship so that means that some of my ships had like over 3,000 damage in terms of uh, um, steel bullets alone, but that means that you have to survive all the um, air carriers, laser, and missile ships before you can even uh, get a chance to uh, use those commanders who have only steel bullet uh, damage on them. So the advantage is that they, they are extremely powerful if you actually get to use them. The disadvantages are though that um, they are very slow because they're the slowest weapon system in this game. And also, their ships are typically not that strong. As you can see here, they've only got 30 HP, and that that's like really, very really fucking low. Even the highest tier of uh, cannon ships you can acquire don't have a lot of HP compared to other uh, other better ships or other ships of its same uh, rank. So we'll get into rank and all, all that, all that real, really detailed stuff in a second here. But I don't know exactly when, but we'll get to them eventually. So I can, as you can see, um, on the left hand side, if you will see here, you can attach up to four ships on, on your commander. Um, for, but there is a catch though. For example, Togo Tsuyoshi has his first his first ship slot locked. That means you can't move remove this ship at all. This will stay here no matter what, no matter what you try to do to this. That's because this ship is his flagship called Nagato, and uh, basically you can't remove it. Um, so which kind of sucks, but I mean, it's it's better than nothing. And um, as you can see, he's got the best uh, bonus slots here. And that's another thing that um, I would like to get into right now. Each slot will have, or may or may not have, a bonus slot. And even then, some of those bonuses could be, in fact, negative. So be careful where you um, apply your um, your ships to. Because if you put them on the wrong slots, you're not using your commander's uh, full potential correctly. So make sure to equip ships into the correct slots. For Togo Shiyoshi's case, you don't really have to worry about um, like being so anal about equipping ships into proper slots because it don't really matter because his bonus slots or his bonuses are all stats plus 30 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 so you can equip any ship in any order you want it doesn't matter because the bonuses are all going to be the same and by all stats it means all stats literally all stats hp radar carriers lasers missiles and cannons will all be increased by 10 percent if they're available so for me um the radars, the, I don't have any carriers, uh, missiles, or cannons, so HP, lasers, and radars, radar are all this are all these stats that I can uh, be buffed by by um, Tsuyoshi's or Togo's bonus uh, bonuses here that you can see. So now that I've uh, covered that. We also move on to the command points. So you, this number that you see here, the 480 out of uh, 510, 480 means that um, it's the total amount of command points that you currently have in this in this army or in, under uh, Togo's um, kind of command. 510 is the maximum that he can uh, he, that he can, uh, for example, command. So let's say we remove these two uh, ships. So if we were to equip, if if we were trying to equip this capital ship right here. It won't let me because it'll say, as you can see at the bottom, insuff insufficient command points. So even if I tried to equip this, I wouldn't be able to because it won't let me. And it, whenever that command point uh, number flashes red, that means you know you can't attach another one. So unfortunately, you're going to have to work your way around it. So let me re-equip those ships again. I forgot which one that I had on. Was it this one? Yep, it was this one. Okay, so now that I've covered that, let's go, for example, let's go into another. Um, oh yeah, uh, I forgot about the passive skills. If the, if uh, you scroll your mouse over this uh, little rectangle here, it'll show you the description of this commander's uh, passive skill if they have any. Some commanders don't have any passive skills at all, but whatever. So as you can see here, he's got the passive skill called Great Tactician, and it'll give all f fleets in the same battlefield 10% uh, 10 more attack. This is crucial because later on, if you do his uh, events, he'll actually gain... Um, a even better passive skill uh, with the help of his daughter Maki uh, that'll increase it to 20% not 10% and that's a very significant number because it'll allow you to um, destroy uh, some ships that you weren't able to destroy otherwise so yeah 
keep this in mind, keep this in mind. His skill is very, very good, even though it's only at 10%. So moving on to uh, these other commanders. Actually, we don't have time for that. I've already basically explained the basics of this game, of the commanders, and what they, what their kind of special attributes are. So let's see here. When you click on an enemy territory that's adjacent to you, when you click on them, you can uh, click on this scout button. If you click on it, you'll see uh, basically the uh, battle zone that you can expect to see once you actually engage in battle. So you can kind of click in between here, see, check out their uh, forces beforehand, and then prepare for it accordingly. So now that I explained all that, let's actually jump right into it. So now that I've uh, saved it, and uh, one thing to know, uh, warn about though is that this is not Sengoku Rants in the fact that it will not auto save your game for you. So be make sure, please make sure to uh, manually save every time you come upon a new turn. Otherwise, you will have to start from your last save slot, which may be God knows uh, when your last save slot was. So if you don't save your uh, work often, um, yeah, say goodbye to your progress and your hard work. Also, do keep in mind that this game only has 99 save slots, so unfortunately it doesn't have any as many slave slots as Sengoku Rants, but I mean, gotta deal with it. So, let's go on to it. Alright, so now we're attacking Beijing, and once again, um, if you guys would like to read the dialogue, unfortunately I'm not really into um, reading all the dialogue because it's going to take too much time, honestly. Um, I, I guess I suppose I could once I have more time, but unfortunately I don't at the moment. Um, so, yeah, sorry, but maybe next time. And I'm just going to summarize what's uh, basically happening for you guys. So basically here, uh, we're attacking Beijing. And the basically the Chinese authority here, well, ba they're basically Chinese, um, is freaking out because they're just like, oh my god, they're attacking us. Literally. So, also, one of the defectors from uh, the pre-game um, kind of opening introduction dialogue. If you guys didn't catch on to that, what happened before the uh, before the, we actually started the game, before the opening, um, was that one of the... Um, Japanese commanders, Navy commanders, betrayed uh, his fellow Navy and um, basically defected with his uh, with some other uh, renegades, Japanese renegades, and fought for Japan and ba or fought for China rather, and then they just basically tore the Japanese Navy a new one, and they killed the um, I want to say they killed the the current. Um, Minister, Navy Minister, or something like that. I don't know what the top position of the Navy is called in this game, but anyways, that's why uh, now Togo Tsuyoshi is now the head of the Navy in terms of uh, in terms of command and stuff like, and rank and stuff like that. So now basically we're just getting we're just coming back to get revenge. Also, I will be. Oh yeah, so Rinfa is the girl on the left. Obviously, um, she's a Chinese girl in the red suit, and she's one of the servants for the Emperor of. Um, what is it? She's one of the servants for the Emperor of uh, China, and um, they call it the Shen Empire or something like that. I don't really care about his name, but she works. She's basically one of the servants, and uh, she's really into the philosophy of shareism. Now, if you think about it. First of all, it sounds really fucking gay. Second of all, it's supposed to parody communism. So obviously, communist Russia during World War II. She, in this case, in this case, it's a game. Rinfa is really, really into. Uh, she kind of buys into uh, what's basically communism in this game. It's called shareism. It's really random, but whatever. So let's go right into the next guy. This guy is called Big Sorge, and he's the super spy. Not really. I'm not referring to combat arms right now, but he's a quote-unquote super spy of um, what's basically the country that's basically Russia in this game. So basically, he's trying to incite rebellion in the decaying uh, Chinese Empire, and uh, he's managed to convert Rinfa in this case to uh, the philosophy of shareism, basically communism. I'm just gonna call it communism because shareism sounds really fucking gay. I'm not gonna say that again. So if you guys really wondered why uh, I suddenly cut myself off there, that was because of the fact that there was an H scene of the defector of Japan that I was talking about earlier, uh, basically banging uh, a lolly, a lolly commander of China. So yeah, um, that wasn't really YouTube appropriate, so that's why I cut it out. So yeah, that being said, just leaving the bad memories aside, <laughs> this is the battle. 
This is called this is the standard battlefield of Daitekoku. This will always be your standard battlefield. You'll always see this every time you attack a country. So let's get right into this. Actually, we're at the we're at the mark, so we're going to cut it right here. So next time, guys, when we come back, we're going to get straight into the battle mechanics of Daitekoku. So make sure to keep your eyes out on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. And this has been the Daitekoku Walkthrough LP of Asian Psycho. I hope you guys enjoyed and look forward to the next episode. Peace, guys.